portable music. It has been a long time passion of some to be able to take songs with us wherever we go in a very small portable package. And over the years it's evolved and changed and has been uh, has come along in different forms. Whether it's the, uh, the original uh, iPod touch here or some of us who are older may remember the cassette you know, the old cassette that didn't hold anywhere near 10,000 songs, but, uh, you know, it was all right. It did its job at the time, and it was cheap. Or maybe if you were a child of the 80s, you remember the pocket rocker that hold, held about two songs on it. And speaking of iPods, we have the, uh, the iPod Shuffle here, and something that wants to be one. And we have uh, this Rio MP3 and this Philips. And we have the Rave MP made by uh, Click, and uh, actually it's made by uh, the Sensory Science Corporation. But uh, you can see that on my channel as well if you've never seen a Click MP3 player. And then of course you know the, why not just make an, uh, an organizer uh, an MP3 player? So that's what Palm did here with this Palm Pilot. It has a MP3 playback capability, a headphone jack, and a place to put an SD card for your music. And in the 90s we had exciting products like this uh, digital compact cassette uh, player here that could play back analog cassettes. So it took technology from here and put it in a portable package and then gave us digital tapes to play on it as well. And you'll see one of those on my channel. And of course, the 1980s, very early 1980s, brought us the uh, the Discman, or at least the compact disc itself. Maybe not the Discman quite yet, but uh, you know, carrying uh, digital quality music around wasn't too bad. Although this doesn't really fit in your pocket. And uh, today, I got out my uh, good old Sony uh, mini disc player here, and uh, still kicking, still working. And, uh, of course, this was a, an intermediate uh, technology. It, it allowed you to record music onto little floppy disks, yet at the same time uh, allowed you to download songs from your computer directly to a machine without having to record uh, through an audio cable. So that was a pretty neat and innovative way of getting music digitally as well. So I know I haven't quite gone in chronological order with all of these devices, but in the early 2000s, there was another product that came out that was very exciting and, uh, and unique in its own way. And uh, it was actually a device that you could hack as well. And I'm going to show you how I hacked it myself. So uh, let me show you what that is. This exciting, innovative, amazing, and super stylish product was called the Arcos or Arcos jukebox studio 20 and it was introduced in uh 2002 and it weighs 290 grams let's take a look at this guy so um when i first saw this at a thrift store i was like what on earth am i looking at here but uh very odd design although very practical design this unit for 2002 i don't know what you were doing in 2002 computer wise but uh, in 2002, I don't think I owned a portable hard drive or even a flash drive, if those even existed back then. But this MP3 player had a dual purpose capability. It was not only a portable hard drive, but it was an MP3 player as well. So it had a 20 gigabyte hard drive in it, and it literally has a 20 gig IDE hard drive in the base down here, replaceable. Um, it has these weird side panels, which kind of remind me of like barbells, you know, like if you're going to like work out, you know, it's like two barbells stuck next to each other. Of course, they wouldn't be very heavy ones. But uh, so there's a practical purpose for these bars on the side here. And I'll show you what that practical purpose is. Voila, that is where the batteries were. So there were four AA batteries that you could replace in it. When I got this unit, it did not power up at all. I could not power it. And what I had to do was take these batteries out. The original, of course, the rechargeables that came with it were completely dead. But I had to clean the contacts here and here uh, for the unit because uh, they were corroded. 
And once I cleaned the contacts and put some fresh batteries in it, she came to life. And as you'll hear, let's see if I can get it to play something here. I'll play you, actually play you something here in a minute, but uh, okay, let's see. This is a very awkward system it has here. So listen up. Can you hear that? Well, anyway, you can hear that hard drive power up each time you turn the unit on or off. So I'm going to turn it off here. Yeah, still can't really hear it. Sometimes it's louder than other times. I was hoping it would do it loud enough for you guys to hear it on this video. So anyway, what makes this thing so unique is the fact that it held 20 gigs of music, which was a lot of memory uh, at that time. In fact, probably a lot of laptops had 20 gigs worth of hard drive space in them. But uh, to turn it on, you hold this power button here. So you have to hold it on. I don't know if you heard the thing whiz up like, like a normal uh, hard drive would or whir up. All right, so you've got a menu button here. You've got a stop button, a play, pause, minus, and plus there. On the top here, you have a line out and an ear jack. Flip it around to the bottom. You have a line in and a DC in as well as a full-size USB port. So I didn't have a USB full-sized cord. I had to buy one. It's a USB-A to USB-A so that I could load music on this guy. But um, I also found out that my 64-bit version of Windows 8 could not uh, you know, pull a driver out of its hat for me to use it as an external hard drive. So I went through all of the trouble of loading a virtual machine on my computer loading Windows XP into that virtual machine and install the driver inside the virtual machine and now the virtual machine can read the hard drive. So let me show you a little bit of that before I uh, demonstrate this thing's playback and menu capabilities. The software, virtual machine software that I'm using is called Oracle VM VirtualBox and VirtualBox is completely free for you to download and play with for personal use. And so I created a virtual machine, and I'll go ahead and boot that up now. And as you can see over here, I've got my USB 2.0, uh, or well, it's USB 2.0 cord, although it doesn't support USB 2.0. Uh, I have the plug plugged in to the USB port on the bottom of the player and into my computer. And you can see here it shows on the screen USB mode. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to tell uh, VirtualBox that uh, this USB port is actually for it. So I'm going to go to USB and then I'm going to click on this uh, in-system design USB storage adapter. Click on it. All right. And normally I would hear a noise, but I didn't hear one that time for some reason. Let's make sure I did it correctly. Okay, so let's try this. I'm gonna unplug it, plug it back in. And I think we're golden now. Yep, now I see a little checkbox there. So now I can go to my, my computer and very shortly here, we are going to see another hard drive up here and there it is and I'll just open the folder and view the files. So there's actually a My Music folder on there, and all of this music that you see here was already on the unit when I got it. So look at me, I get all this free music. I paid $10 for the, uh, the actual MP3 player. So pretty fun product and a lot of entertainment for 10 bucks, right? Um, so there you go, That's this is the uh, the, the aspect of it that you'll need to be able to uh, to uh, to be able to access the device itself. Now, the hacking part of it that I mentioned at the beginning of the video is this product called Rockbox, and Rockbox still exists. And you can go to Rockbox.org and download uh, new firmware for this particular MP3 player, and uh, it will change the operating system and give it more functionality. 
than it originally had. And it looks like the current version is Rockbox 3.13. So with the reading that I was doing on this shows that a lot of people went ahead and put this Rockbox software on it because the software that Arcos or Arcos put on there wasn't so fabulous. And of course I was intrigued that it had an input on it and I was hoping that that input would allow me to record and uh, I have not uh, yet found that capability on the unit. So um, it may be in the software somewhere, I just haven't found it yet. But in any case, let's get back to the actual unit itself. First off, what is the sound quality like? Is it very good? Well, I've got my little jam speaker here that uh, is also reviewed on my channel. Now I'm going to plug my little jam speaker into the headphone jack which is uh, on the top left here. Plug that in. And I'm going to take the USB cord out. And we'll see uh, how to access a file in here. Now I've downloaded some free music, some royalty free music from YouTube so that I can play music on here and not get in trouble. So uh, check that out if you haven't checked out the free music uh, that you can use for uh, YouTube purposes. You'll find it on uh, YouTube's website. So we're going to go into Files. And once I'm in Files, I go into My Music. And I've created a folder called Royalty Free. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Play on that. And just pick a song here. Crank it up a little bit. stop and then I can go to the next song. So there you go. Uh, sound quality is really good. And uh, the th one of the things that I like about this unit, it actually has a separate bass and treble control. And if you go up to your menu here, we want to go to the top part of the menu. And let's see where we go here. We're going to go down the menu somewhat here. We can resume playback, but let's go into settings. And then there's sound settings. So then here's where you change your volume, all right? So if I hit plus, whoops, got to go into it first. So then I can hit my plus or my minus, set my volume control. Uh, then I can go back here. Uh, here's my bass control and treble control. So you can kind of enhance uh, your listening pleasure there. You have a stereo width setting, so I guess it kind of makes, puts more separation between the two channels, perhaps. Um, let's see, over here you've got your battery level meter, of course your volume level, and uh, this little thing here that just says param. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I'm sure it's helpful, whatever it is. Um, so let's go back a level here. There was actually little games that you can play on here, and you guys are going to think this is hilarious. Uh, let's see, let's go back into settings, let's see if I can find it. There's general settings, theme settings. Now this operating system had different functionality for different units. Obviously this one's display is a bit uh, archaic, so there's not a whole lot you can do. But uh, let's see, where is the general settings here? So we have uh, playlists, file view, database, display, system, start up and shut down. Uh, bookmarking, language, voice, uh, 
hot key. Okay. Let's see, what does voice do? Voice menus, voice directories. Okay, that's something that's new to me as I'm making this video. Uh, let me see if I can find where, where the games are. Yes, there were games written for this silly thing. Let's see, playback settings, theme settings, manage settings. We'll find it here. Voice hotkey. Okay, it's actually under plugins, and under when you go under plugins, you have games and you have applications. So we have games and we have apps. Imagine that. This had apps before the uh, the iPod had apps. Okay, so uh, I may be wrong about that. But anyway, so we're going into games. And look at this. We got Blackjack. We got Brickman. Bubbles. Chess Box. Chopper. Dice. Flip It. Goban. Or Goban. Jackpot. Jewels. Maze. Maze Zam. Minesweeper, Nim, Pegbox, Pong, Reverse Eye, Robot Finds, whatever, blah, 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 Rock Blocks, Rock Blocks 1, Snake, Snake 2, all right, Space Rock, Star, Sudoku, on and on we go. So the one I was going to show you, which was really funny, kind of cracked me up, Flip It, which is actually uh, Tetris. So there go. there's our title screen. Oh wait, no, this isn't Tetris. I'm not sure which one this is. Let's see if we can find it again here. Games. And apparently these are on the hard drive because as I'm tapping on these, I feel the hard drive gear up. Chopper. Yeah, incompatible model. So some of these don't run on here. Dice, flip it, go ban, incompatible model. Okay, so you're going to have to take my word for it. It's in there somewhere. I ran one of the apps in there, one of the other games that actually caused the thing to lock up and I had to restart it. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, there's just these tiny little itty bitty little just little dashes and dots moving down the screen and it was like the left side of the screen so uh, it was ha uh, hardly entertaining to sit there and look at this tiny screen anyway and then pl try to play a little game on it but anyway uh, it, it was it was nice of them to try so um, in any case uh, so there's the machine itself and all of its capabilities and again a note a full-size notebook hard drive in the back of this thing that, like, like I said, apparently could be uh, replaced. I do have a 40 gig hard drive that I took out of my Apple TV a long time ago that might fit in there, but uh, I haven't tried to do anything with that yet. But, uh, you know, as MP3 players go, this was pretty neat. And, um, you know, it has that techy, nerdy uh, aspect to it where you can actually hack it, put a different operating system on it, put a different hard drive in it, upgrade it, you know, downgrade it, whatever you want to do, or, or just use it as an external hard drive. All that capability right there in a device that, quite honestly, I had never even seen before. But uh, you can you can look these up online and read about them on Wikipedia, and there's a lot more information on there. There was different models. There was ones uh, that had uh, more characters on the display, and there was models that also recorded. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little uh march into the Arcos world of uh, mp3 players and uh, please subscribe to my channel and as I said at the beginning of the video look out for some of those other devices you saw and uh, check them out on my channel as well share this with a friend and subscribe leave a comment and have a great day and uh, enjoy some listening of some great music on hopefully uh, your mp3 player or maybe in fact the uh, the mp3 player that uh, you, you may be watching this video on right now. Who knows?